Hey folks, Fall RC here. Got a scale truck video for you today and uh, we're talking about winches and we're looking at something very, very cool. Here's a three racing winch. Can you spot what's different? Well, we have pop free spool. Uh, I'm gonna be showing you today a free spool modification for three racing winches from Locked Up RC. So let's take you into how to build it and then we'll show you how it works. Right, so I've taken the three racing winch apart and here is the uh, original end and here's the new one from the locked up rc there is a slight color difference i don't know if you can make that out on camera um interestingly my old three racing winch is a fairly good color match but the new one is a bit of a lighter silver it's not the end of the world i suppose right and the big difference is you can see on the end here it has a hole for the pin to come through and inside the casting is very slightly if I look at these together very slightly different so according to the instructions what you do is you take this bushing and that goes down in the bottom right so that's the bushing in the end and then the next thing we do he says leaning over to look at some instructions i've got up here is we take the large bearing and that goes into the housing so before i pop that in i'm just going to cover the edge up with marine grease that's just to try and provide a bit of a seal on that side of the bearing. So we'll pop that into the housing like so. And then we'll give the other face a squirt as well. I've pre oiled these bearings already. Right, so that's that end done. Right, so now we take the spool and the pin. And these go in together so that's going to fit together like so so now what we need to do for that again a little bit of marine grease just to try and reduce the chances of corrosion on this we don't want things sticking together as they get a little bit worn so that will go in into the new spool like that now you get these do you get two of these in the pack these little cross pins, I don't know if you can see on camera, but they have a tiny slot in them. So as you um, tap this in, it will crush down and grip. Now, we've got to get this pin into that hole. <laughs> now, the pin is uh, a slightly larger diameter than the hole. It does advise in the instructions to sort of pinch the end down very slightly to help get that started. So uh, I'm going to get a pair of pliers and just pinch and, and close the slot obviously you don't want to do it too much otherwise it's not going to grip right I've closed that very slightly and I'm now going to see if I can fit this in this is going to be one of those jobs where you need about three pairs of hands I think I might take this apologies but I might take this off camera go and pop this in a vise and do it in a more enclosed area because I think this pin's going to pop out and disappear and I'll lose it. Right, that was a bit fiddly, but uh, I've got the pin in now. Um, it does say in the instructions that the, the split on the pin should be facing away from the spool. So you've got this, um, it's not completely round, it's got a split in it, and it should be facing away from the spool as you tap it in. Uh, I found once you get it lined up, I actually squeezed it in a vise to get it part way through, and then you can use a center punch. I've got a, a flattened one here, and just tap it down and get it through. So you can see now that pin sits in the trench so it can rotate round or if it's pushed in the trench it sits in and locks. Right, and now we slide one of the four washers onto the shaft like so. Now um, they do make two uh, different tension springs uh, for this. I think this is a soft one. I might be wrong on that but they certainly make a harder return one and a softer one. Um, I guess that depends on how hard you want to have to pull the um, pull the screw out. So now we pop all of this mechanism into here, and you line it up until we get the end. There we are, just poking through. I'll just clean the grease out at the end of the shaft there. Um, I'm going to probably thread lock a very small amount of thread lock the screw in, and I don't want the marine grease making it uh, come loose too easily. The last thing you want to do is lose the screw from the end when it's vibrating on the trail. This is the tiny screw. Now I know some people have used larger screws here um, 
to give you something bigger on the end to grab hold of and remove. I might well do that uh, because where I'm going to put this winch is going to be on my 610 Jeep Rubicon and the way the bumper is um, <laughs> I won't be able to get to it very easily without having a much longer screw. But we'll deal with the bigger screw later on. Smear of thread lock on there just enough to give it a bit of grip on this. Back on the other side of the winch now so uh, let's give this a marine grease around here. Now I haven't disassembled this winch and greased it up, so let's do that now. Quite easy. Here's all the gears. I always just fill these up with marine grease. It will throw a bit out, but it gives it a nice good covering, a nice bit of protection on that end of the motor. Now the other end, yeah, this motor's got the slight opening there as well. A little dob over the shaft just to try and stop water getting in around the joints and so on and shovel that back in as you go make sure you pull the wire right so that's reasonably sealed up put the rest of the grease around there so now on our shaft we're going to put this tiny tiny bearing on the shaft so now we're going to reassemble this now because the the weird thing here I was looking for for a moment was uh, where's the grub screw to line up to grip the shaft but it doesn't work like that now Gov um, within the black rod that's gone through it, I don't know if you can quite see that there, it's not a completely round hole, there's a flat in it that's going to engage with a flat on this shaft so again, tiny bit of uh, marine grease around on the bearing splodge all that back together right, so there we are um, looking at that, the gap the spool is very much on the edge there, but I think that's a good thing. Having a having a really tight clearance there is great because your winch line won't fall in. Whether or not it's actually rubbing, I don't know yet. We'll find out when we put it back together. So the base plate is over here. So we need to get the base plate back together. And obviously we need to thread this line onto this winch. Right, last thing to do is to put the cable back on the winch. And I was looking around the drum here trying to find where the grub screw was but there isn't. Uh, what you have here is just a drilled out hole that goes through and you can just thread your cable through. Um, I guess you could tie a knot in it so it won't come back through. Anyway that's how you do it. Um, I'm not going to use the standard cable. Uh, as you can see it's nasty coily springy stuff. It's not very long and so on. Uh, I will be putting on my current favourite which is um, braided carp line. This stuff has a breaking strain of 52 pounds. Um, you can get stronger stuff, but then again, it gets thicker. And 52 pounds, which is about 23 and a half kilograms, um, is quite enough. This stuff is really nice and smooth. It's nice and floppy, so it winds around well, slides over things well. So we now need to get this uh, threaded up through the hole, which could be easier said than done. It's kind of like threading a needle, this. So that's going to go through there. Um, I've not terminated one of these before. I'm just going to knot the cable back on itself. Um, hopefully that should be all right to keep it in place. Uh, I tend to run a lot of cable on my winch line anyway, so I never end up getting right to the end of it. So um, that should be fine once we've got a few rotations wrapped around there. I'll just do a bit of a, a bit of a granny knot here. Right, before I spool all the cable on, I want to get the bottom uh, plate of the winch reattached. And before I do that, I'm going to remove this fair lead. Um, I don't like the stock uh, three racing fair leads. They stick out quite a lot. And um, where the winch goes on my rig, it will stick out past the bumper. So if you come down on something, the first thing you're going to hit is this fair lead. So instead, I'm going to be using a kit here from Mad Dog RC. Um, this is the scale winch upgrade kit. I really like these. MDRC010. There's lots of goodies in here for upgrading a uh, winch. You have some really nice strong line, a good strong hook. Uh, you have some stickers that are specifically for a three racing winch. They give you a sticker here and a worn logo over there. And also you get a very nice little fair lead. That fair lead is the size for this three racing bracket. That fair lead will not fit on the RC four wheel drive replica worn winch. And you also get a piece of plastic which is a shim to stop stuff coming off the edge but I don't think we need that in this case so I'm just going to get a centre punch and bang these rivets off and then screw on the well I think it's a nicer fair lead 
Right, so here's the three racing winch reassembled, and as you can see, it looks pretty much like a three racing winch, except there's the tiny little end of that Allen bolt there that you grab hold of. Now, that's what I'm finding is a problem. Um, now, my fingernails aren't super short, they're not super long, and I can just about get hold of that and pull it out. Um, so you pull it out to get the freeze ball going, and then it pops back in to engage. So if you're out on the trail and it's really cold, obviously with gloves, you've got no chance on that. Cold fingers as well might be quite difficult. And if your winch is sat down somewhere in your rig, you know, getting your fingers on could be tricky. So I think you definitely want to have a longer screw sticking out of that. Um, maybe a screw with a like a, maybe a couple of washers and a big washer to give you something bigger to grab hold of. Obviously, depending on where you're going to put it, will be right for you. Definitely want to put something on the end here. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Anyway, so if I pull the freeze ball out, you can now say, wow, there we go, loads of loads and loads of cable coming out. And as you go round, uh, it sometimes I find sometimes pulls back in, sometimes doesn't. I've just pulled out about a metre and a half of cable, and then you can just pop it back in. That's now locked, and I can wind all that back in. Now, see the amount of time it's taken me to pull this wire back in? You would have had to spend that amount of time in a competition paying out the winch cable before you started winching and I'm still winding it back in I'm still winding it back in this is the standard motor on the Kapu controller at the moment I've decided not to put the hot motor in this yet I just wanted to focus on this uh, free spool right I've just gone and found a long 2mm threaded screw and you can now see that you've got lots to grab hold of you can pull that out and then we're free spooling away and I just might go around and find the slot plug back in ready to winch. Right, so we've now got the locked up RC upgraded three racing winch back on my Rubicon and it looks absolutely fine. It's a normal three racing winch but you just have this little screw sticking out on the side here. Now with the standard screw that comes up in the locked up RC kit you've got a little black screw head sticking out there and for my particular bumper, this is from Rad Shape RC, this bull bar, um, I could not get fingers in there so I've got a longer two millimeter screw that sticks out and I've actually had to drill a hole in the side of the bumper but that's not a problem and the screw that operates the free spool I can now grab and I can pull in and out quite easily and uh, I used that at a G6 event recently and it's brilliant quick grab it and here we go I can just start paying out meters and meters of cable no problem at all pops back in now it's locked and I can start to winch need a bit more pop Bit more cable absolutely fantastic such a time saver uh, and it is a cool little feature so um, what do I think about the free spool well it's a bit fiddly to build but not the end of the world you do have to be careful putting that pin in that uh, goes on the shaft but uh, as long as you're not going to lose it on the floor in your garage or something that's not a problem otherwise it's a brilliant product it looks the part uh, the bearings and so on are very well made it all looks like it's going to last it's great the only thing I have found, and I just would comment, is um, sometimes when you try to pull the pin out, uh, it's stiff and you can't. That's because if you've got tension on your winch cable, so you've brought it all the way back in and maybe it's pulling against the hook on your fair lead, um, you'll find if the cable's under tension, you might not be able to release the pin. All you have to do is just release a bit of cable on your winch and then you can pull it out and free spool. So um, I think it's a fantastic product. Well done to Locked Up RC there. Uh, there's some links in the descriptions to the product if you want to have a look at it. Any questions or comments as always, please post them below. Thanks for watching.